Hi all, I'm Dan Smegrad, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, June 17th, 2021, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today, Cupix Works 2.0 versus Matterport for construction professionals. And here to talk to us about it is Gannon Wilder, Gannon Wilder, uh, product manager for Cupix. Hey, Gannon, good to see you. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. Uh, I, I, Gannon, how about we jump in immediately with a demo that shows Cupix BIM versus Actual? Yeah. Uh, well, essentially, you know, what Cupix does is uh, we enable you to take you know, small 360 cameras, uh, walk around in a variety of different modes to capture a site. So we have a lot of unique algorithms of, of how we're capturing and processing the data. Awesome, um, Gannon, let's, let's cover that, but let's first do the show so we can see what it actually looks like. And then we'll talk about how, how you capture it and the magic. I, th I think you got so much magic just on this one screen of being able to show a, uh, a BIM model versus a street view like experience that I, I think uh, that, that's really, I think, the place for us to begin. And then we'll talk about how you do this magic. Yeah, so we could, um, uh, we have a lot of stuff to show today. Uh, but, but, you know, one of, the, one of the powerful features we built with NQFIX is the ability to uh, align your virtual tour uh, within uh, a BIM environment. Um, and so this is, you know, fully na navigable uh, space. It's not just a, a rendering of the model. You actually have the entire uh, live, uh, model built in. So as you, as you navigate the space, you can see the overlay um, of, of duct work, of uh, built walls. Um, you know, just like in BIM, you have a, a variety of layers turned on. Um, so this one, I think, is actually without um, the interior wall layer. Um, but this essentially lets you compare as uh, built documentations at a certain point in time with the design model. And on the, so anything that you can do in a BIM model can be turned on and off. So if you wanna look at mechanical, electrical, plumbing, uh, uh, you can do that in your BIM model within Cupix Works player. Uh, yes, yes. So, so you can upload uh, an entire full uh, the model, and then as you need to turn on or off uh, layers to be able to see specific areas you're interested in. Okay, and then what we're looking at on the left side is the actual uh, 3D tour. So if you're actually walking through this space that's been uh, captured in a point in time. Exactly, and uh, you're able to capture by video by walking through the site or in more traditional methods of where you stop take a pano and move forward and we're able to track your position within it. Okay, because could we walk a little bit more through the space and, and it just automatically syncs to the BIM? Yeah, so you can see we're just moving through the facility. Um, awesome. T talk to me about the, uh, the map that we're looking at, the, 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 fl the floor plan, uh, the 2D floor plan in the bottom left, please. Yeah, I mean, within Cupix, the viewer is built for, you know, managing any variety of projects. Um, so we actually can filter by layers. And the specific project, we have just a single layer. But if you have a multi-floor building, uh, this drops down. You can actually see multiple levels. So you can easily pop between different levels of your plan. Um, and then also easily track uh, your position within that layer. Um, so can I walk through this space by clicking on the floor plan on, on the bottom left? Yeah, as you see, I can click and uh, navigate to completely different areas. As you're moving around, every single pando is oriented you know, within full six degrees um, of freedom within the, the 3D space. So within the 2D model or 2D plan and also like the BIM model. So um, you, can, you, can, you can click anywhere there was a, uh, a 360 panorama that was shot or just click on the actual space to walk through it. Correct. OK. 
Okay. I, I think I see some annotation in the space. Can you point out what we're looking at on the left side? Uh, yeah, and I can just turn on that view uh, to see more detail of it. Is um, yeah, you, you know, you're able to uh, track issues, RFIs, tasks uh, within the space. Um, and they're all tracked. Uh, you can see them spatially on, on the map view. Um, so you can see where different areas are tagged and you can go actually like, navigate uh, to that specific area. Uh, you can also see it from the, the list view and navigate uh, from the list. Um, and just while we're here, you know, we can note that we do have several integrations with Procore, PlanGrid, and Ben360. Uh, so we can also pull data um, or push data from these systems and, and track it spatially where it's located on a 2D okay. map. So, uh, so there's, there's a seamless integration with, uh, I, I think I heard PlanGrid, Procore, was there another one? Uh, Plan Grid, Procore, and BIM 360. And BIM 360. So if, if, uh, if the architect, engineers, general contractors, uh, building owners, if they're using any of those existing platforms, they seamlessly integrate with Cubix Works. Correct. And, and really the power that, that we enable is, um, you know, we're not primarily an issue tracking system. Uh, we give you the ability to uh, spatially contextualize these issues on the on the on your site. So instead of only just looking at a, maybe a, a 2D map or a plan or just a static image, uh, you can go to the issue, click on the issue, open it up, uh, navigate fully around that environment to understand this issue. Um, and, and we also give the capability to maybe track like what's been going on with this issue over time. Uh, because people are typically scanning, you know, maybe on a weekly basis, uh, maybe every two weeks or once a month, uh, you know, we have a list of multiple times the site was captured. So if I, I can't quite figure out what's going on in this photo, I can maybe go to the month before it automatically, and you, can, you notice the transition was not in the same spot exactly. It's like, you know, maybe like five feet away from each other, uh, but we automatically can detect the nearest pano to your location. Um, a pano being a panorama 360 photo. Correct. Yes, a 360 okay. imagery. Um, so, could, could you could you give us a comparison of uh, weekly construction documentation? Uh, I, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking about a 25 story, 500 thousand square foot office building that needs renovation. Uh, we're doing uh, uh, the potential client is is considering either Cupix Works or Matterport uh, to shoot weekly construction documentation uh, and take advantage of uh, the, the platform's features. Uh, could, could we look at a weekly construction uh, documentation comparison? Yeah, definitely. So, so beyond being able just to navigate within a single view to different uh, points within the timeline uh, to see progress, you can actually see them uh, compared side by side. And, and like I mentioned before, uh, we, we automatically detect, find and detect where the nearest uh, imagery is. So, okay. so the capture locations may, may not, you don't have to manually uh, sync them between dates. You just capture the entire floor on one date, capture the entire floor on a second date, and uh, they're able to sync together. Okay, so it may be hard for our, our viewers uh, to see the, the label in the bottom middle, but that is, uh, a date of when the Cupix 3, 3D tour was taken, and then another date of the same space. So this would be an example of maybe either comparing weekly construction or monthly construction documentation. Correct, and, and it enables you to track uh, progress of a specific location throughout your entire site. And it gives you that, that archival and contextual awareness uh, throughout the entire uh, project. Okay. 
Awesome. So uh, for, forgive me, I interrupted you at the beginning of the show. You were starting to talk about how imagery is captured for this. I think this is the context to be able to see BIM compared to actual or actual compared to actual in terms of uh, progress. Uh, how, how do you actually create the imagery that's used in the Cupix Works uh, platform? Yeah. Uh, one of the big strengths of Cupix is uh, we have a, actually a variety of methods for being able to capture a site. Um, one of those, oh, you know, they, they all start with just the simple uh, 360 camera. So we, you know, work with a lot of different hardwares. You can see our, our list online. Uh, but essentially, you, you know, walk around this with uh, an iOS app on a, most of the time an iPhone, you can use an iPad as well uh, to capture a site. Uh, now you essentially have. So, so for clarification, you're using either the iPhone or the iPad in order to run the camera, but it's Correct. actually the camera that's capturing the imagery. Yes. Yes. So, so we, we only, um, our algorithms specifically only deal with 360 imagery uh, and, and our app enables you to capture a couple different ways. Uh, so we have like high resolution HDR methods where you stop, stand still, take a capture and then move around. Um, and then we're able to uh, stitch each location together. And, and that's a, a similar concept to what a lot of Matterport users uh, do that they'll be familiar with is, you know, different tripod locations going around, except this can be uh, handheld um, and held in really in any orientation. Even if you stick it out to the side, stick it through a window or stick it through a shaft, an elevator core, um, we're still able to orient uh, the, na the navigation and each image so that you're looking at it. Um, no, correct. Okay. Uh, let me go a little bit slower with you. Uh, this capture is really an, an important feature of Cupix. So uh, it's a device agnostic. So any 360 camera can be used to capture imagery for Cupix works. Uh, several. Many, many 360 cameras can be used. Many, and now is, many. That, is that because the Cupix app uh, that works on iOS only works with certain 360 cameras? The behind the scenes of why uh, working with different cameras, it's always like um, like calibration issues and things like that. Uh, so you have to do a lot of work to add a new 360 ah, camera. Okay. Well, give us the short list. What's the short list of uh, under $1,000 360 cameras that are compatible with Cupix Works? The primary cameras we work with is we have the uh, Ricoh Theta uh, line of cameras. Okay, Ricoh uh, Theta V, Ricoh Theta Z1, Ricoh Theta. We specifically work with uh, V and Z1. V and Z1, okay. And then uh, another one that we, really enjoy using is uh, the Mad V. It's not as well known, uh, but, but it works really well for our purpose. And this is only like, um, our entire camera kit with this is just like 300 bucks uh, to get started. Okay, um, we'll come to pricing this. later, but uh, any additional 360 cameras presently supported by Cupix? And we also work with the Insta uh, camera lines. Okay, so in Insta 360 One X2, Insta 360 One X, Insta One, Insta One Three, Insta 360 One R. Uh, the One R and the uh, One X, those two. Okay, and uh, but not the X two. Correct. As of today. As of today. Uh, as of today, Thursday, June seventeenth, twenty twenty one. Okay, great. Then uh, uh, and. And I, I believe you can use other cameras, but really in terms of a fast, efficient workflow, th these are the cameras we're really talking about. In terms of, um, I, I don't think we, we really allow uh, integration with other cameras. Um, so so pri primarily just that list of four. Okay, cameras. so uh, and let's take the Ricoh Theta Z1, a thousand dollar camera. Uh, 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 three ways to use it or four ways? Um, uh, essentially, yeah, there's, there's four ways to use it. And I have just a quick little video just showing people. Um, That'd be great. I can pull that up for you. Uh -huh. um, 
Uh, and essentially there's a couple methods. First is the single shot. That's where for every capture, you have a floor plan on your phone. You just select where on the floor plan you are, and then it just takes a static image. Um, and actually, so we have different capture modes. We also have different ways to hold the camera. You can, as in this video, use like a monopod or some kind of pole like that. You can use just a handheld selfie stick to hold it. Uh, many people have a camera mount on their helmet. Um, I think this one actually shows it. So here you can see you have a cam the, um, the camera attached to your helmet. And this is primarily used in like uh, video mode where it's easy. You don't even have to hold anything in your hands. You just click go with the video and walk through the site. And, and, and just recently we did start supporting a, a different method of capture. Uh, lots of our customers re were using it this way on our site. Um, so, so we're starting to make this a little bit more public now, um, but actually allowing you to uh, capture via a drone. Uh, so, so, so mount the camera to the drone and fly it, which is good for getting different perspectives of your, of your site and you know, for exterior views of the building. Well, on the drone, do you still need uh, to, to maintain uh, connectivity with an iOS device? The workflow is a little bit different. Uh, so no, you do not. Um, you, ca you capture the data separately, and then we have a, a different uh, way to upload the data into our servers. Awesome. And that, that fourth method, uh, I see cluster shot. Can you explain that? Cluster shot is what would be most uh, familiar to Matterport users. It's where you take a series of individual shots, um, and then it's a different type of algorithm than what does a video where you're uh, walking fluidly. Uh, this, you could essentially you know, have the camera in any angle around any variety of pieces of equipment and things like that, and, and take high resolution captures that way. Uh, so, so typically, you know, most of our users do some combination of video shot and cluster shot on their projects. So I imagine there's some trade-offs and reasons. What's, when do I want to use a single shot? Perhaps I am just moving a tripod or I'm just holding up a, a selfie stick with the camera versus having a video capture. People like uh, a video and cluster because that, that's an automatic process that allows them to uh, just quickly place captures throughout site and move quickly. Single shot um, could be for people who uh, want a lot more control and exactly where um, their images are taken. And they're maybe not taking as high volume number of captures. Um, so perhaps you're happy just having a single shot in each room and you just wanna place one you know, imagery location in each room in a floor plan. So you can go in there, add, just add one and then walk out. Where if you do cluster shot or video, you're frequently capturing probably multiple shot images as you walk into the room and then walk back out. Is there a, a trade-off on the quality of the imagery of doing single shot versus video? Um, the highest quality imagery uh, relates to using single shot and also cluster shot. Because each of those, you're taking a, a single um, frame from the camera. And we also have HDR modes. So you can do the HDR modes that are built in with these devices. Uh, with video, um, it's captured as a time-lapse video. Um, so two frames every second. And those uh, videos do come in at, a, you know, you get a little bit more image blur, a little bit more exposure setting issues. Um, so the videos are not as clear as like single and cluster. So I, I, I imagine that if I'm, uh, if I am interested in speed of capture, particularly with weekly construction document, weekly construction documentation, if I'm talking about 25 story, 500,000 square foot uh, office building under renovation, I probably want to be in video mode. And I likely don't really care as much about the image quality. Uh, and so speed of capture, does that sound uh, when I would want to be on video mode? Yeah, and we really find people like a uh, like a hybrid of both methods. Um, so whether many times uh, for large areas or areas where you don't necessarily have as or need as high resolution in, you do the video shot because you're 
you can capture it so much faster. But then for maybe key locations, really complicated areas where you want to get a lot of detail, then you switch over to cluster shot uh, to be able to capture those like key locations. Okay. And the single shot might be, oh, the building's ready to be delivered. It's, uh, it's got all its nice finishes. You, you really care about the photography. Then you, you might move to HDR single shot in order to, to capture the space towards the conclusion of the project. Correct. Yeah. So, so yeah, if you want more control over uh, the site or, or you just want um, uh, just a, a more simple uh, me method, uh, yeah, single shot, you're able to capture it mm -hmm. that way. Do, do you have any uh, uh, estimates on how long it takes to, to do a, a capture? Ah, look at this, great. Uh, yeah, and, and you can see it, like the difference is, is about 20x depending on the environment. So, you know, like everyone familiar in site capture, uh, the, the complexity in the environment is always a huge factor. Um, so here we're comparing uh, an open, like wide open warehouse space, or maybe like an outdoor location uh, compared to an environment, uh, maybe like an office building or a complex like industrial facility or factory that has lots of rooms or lots of equipment and you have to move around. So the, the fastest method is, is the video shot. And, and we have customers doing uh, multi hundred square foot facilities on a weekly basis. Uh, so they do a lot of video, just put on the helmet, walk around, uh, and we've seen about 750,000 square feet an hour. And that's just walking at a steady pace and video shot. Um, many times we say walk like you have a hot cup of coffee. Uh, so you never want to be too abrupt uh, in your movements, uh, but just smooth and steady pace. So I, we, we, I, I am literally tingling looking at this slide because I am either in amazement or disbelief. So... Uh, I, I need to help, I need to understand a little bit more. Let's stay on this slide just for a moment. On open warehouse space using video, 750,000 square feet. Can I even walk that fast? I mean, is that, uh, and, I'm, and I'm thinking I, when I do rows of walking that kind of have the imagery connected, I probably can't be more than what, five to seven feet away or help, help me understand uh, so I, you know, if I was doing Matterport, for, ex for example, which Matterport officially supports up to 10,000 square feet, officially supports up to 200 scans, uh, I think they would probably push back and say, well, we have a way we can do 100,000 or 200 or 300 or 400,000 square feet, but it probably maxes out there and you may or may not be successful actually completing your scan. So mm -hmm. these numbers are really incredible in terms of capture. I just want to see how best we can make it apples to apples comparison. So if, if I'm doing 750,000 square feet, is that based on that I'm walking briskly and I'm doing a row every five to seven feet to my left? The, um, so it, it works a little differently in that you don't necessarily um, have to have uh, uh, the, the spacing like parallel between parallel lanes. If you're like zigzagging, doing a little lawnmower pattern through a facility, uh, you don't have to stay within um, like five feet or 10 feet of each lane. Typically, I I'm looking back and actually I can show an example in a little bit. Um, I think they're doing one in each bay. So it might be like 20, 30 feet for each path, uh, but we're tracking uh, like the linear path that the person is walking. And, and will that still create a three-dimensional model that I can walk from, let's, let's call scan to scan to scan to scan. Uh, even though I was in lane one, I now can walk to lane two, even though it was shot some distance away. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're able to um, navigate our full like uh, 3D virtual space. If you have a, you know, a model, like a 3D model uploaded to your project, it's automatically located within that. If not, we're, we're just automatically located within a uh, floor plan. So uh, looking at this slide, I, I can't overemphasize this because this really just blows me away looking at it. Uh, e even if we go to many small rooms using video and capturing 35,000 square feet, I would say 
maybe a Matterport photographer could do 35,000 square feet, maybe, maybe 2,000 square feet at an hour. So essentially this is saying it's at least double the speed of Matterport. And I think if, if I was a, uh, in the AEC space, one of the questions I'd wanna ask Matterport is, hey, officially, what, how many scans do you support? Officially, how many square feet do you support? So that you get that in writing, uh, because I, uh, every time in the We Get Around Network forum, somebody runs into a problem doing Matterport of a large space, it's because eventually Matterport comes back and says, well, we don't actually support tours that are bigger than 10,000 square feet and, and um, uh, 200 scans even though their salespeople will tell you, oh no, we can shoot 300,000 square feet, 400,000 square feet without a problem. So get it in writing. Uh, that would be a great question to ask. So, uh, so even doing 35,000 square feet for, for Matterport, uh, even if it was possible to do 2,000 square feet an hour, that's... Uh, still about 17 hours mm -hmm. compared to one hour. Am I, am I making this up here? Yeah. And, it, 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 and, and that's one of the huge aspects is like, you know, most of, of the people on site, um, many times they're not even capturing for a full hour uh, each week. They, they might go walk around for, you know, 30 minutes, uh, capture their site, come back to the office and they're done for the week. Yeah, um, so I, I mean, I, I, we've spent, spent a lot of time on this slide because it's absolutely that important. You, you know, if, if, you're in, if you're an architect, you're an engineer, you're a general contractor, uh, uh, you, you probably understand that the most expensive part of capture is actually the person who's doing the capture. So mm -hmm. if you can do capture in an hour with Cupix, versus Matterport that might take 17 hours and, and struggle to actually process the model. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, and, and, and that's another aspect of so the speed of capture is one and also the, the scale of a site is another. We don't have any limits on a number of, of images or number of captures we have on a site or even square footage. We have some facilities um, that, that are very massive. I don't know the numbers, but like uh, just these massive uh, developments going on and, and we're able to uh, load them all up and render them. Um, it's pretty exciting. And, and in terms of capture, uh, so let, let's say we are talking about a million square feet. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to my example, a half a million square feet, 25,000, uh, 25 stories, a half a million square feet. Does that have to be captured by one person or could five people all take a, take a floor, or take five floors of that building? Um, uh, yeah, it is, it is possible to merge uh, captures from like multiple devices or multiple people together um, and then have them all synthesized in our viewer. Um, so, so you could have, if you wanna break up the work a certain way, you could have people, um, what, 25 story that. building, five people, each doing five floors. But I, I think what I'm even hearing is 500,000 square feet for Cupix is not really a big deal for someone to walk the entire space every day or every week or every month, whatever's needed in terms of uh, construction documentation. Yeah. But I, I ask because with, with Matterport, you can't merge floors from different cameras. Uh, you can use a different camera. You can switch from a BLK360 to a Matterport Pro 2 to an, uh, a, Z, a Ricoh Theta Z1 in the same shoot, but it, it must be one model that's shot. So you don't have the ability to have five different people all work on the same space in order to get the, uh, the, the documentation done sooner. M maybe we're talking about a space that has people and you're limited by certain hours and therefore you need to have multiple people do the data collection so you're not capturing when uh, office hours or mall hours are, for example. Yeah. Um, 
and that is, you know, a benefit of Cupix is you have multiple people, different cameras. Typically, you know, what we see is maybe you have one person tasked with like, hey, you need to capture every week at a specific time and, and they can go and capture the video just walking around the site. Um, and then other people that uh, as you know, issues come up or as key locations need to be tracked, they're like, hey, we have like these three spots we really want like high resolution in. Uh, can you go and, and do that? Um, and so like, you know, they might use a different camera or a different method, like video method versus like the cluster method. Um, but essentially you're able to merge all of it together into our, our viewer. And, and I, I think when you're describing cluster, I think the interesting thing there is, 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 is if you needed close-ups of mechanical or plumbing electrical that's up in the ceiling, you literally can, or, or around the boiler in order to capture uh, depth data, uh, uh, you can just move that camera anywhere. Uh, that's really not possible with Matterport. You can't, re in a practical sense, uh, put the Matterport camera up into the, to the ceiling, let alone tilt it at some angle. So uh, that seems like a, a tremendous advantage of Cupix when you got odd spaces that need to be captured, uh, particularly uh, 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 mechanical, electrical, plumbing related uh, spaces. How about outdoors? Are there any issues with capture outdoors? No limitations with outdoors. Because we're you know, primarily only using, it's just a standard 360 camera. Uh, we're, we're not dealing with the infrared type of depth sensor uh, like Matterport has. Um, so there's no uh, limitations uh, based off like the infrared light. So, so if you were interested in doing, um, uh, let's say the top floor that's under construction and there's no ceiling and the, the sun is pouring in, doesn't affect Cupix uh, capture in any way. Uh, for uh, Matterport, uh, I, I guess if you're in the AEC space, the question to ask Matterport is, help me understand the difference of a 360 view and a 360 scan uh, and uh, help me understand uh, what the difference of the walk around experience is and help me understand what I can measure and can't measure. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, I, I think what Matterport would probably say is, oh, oh, oh no, you can, you can shoot outdoors. That's not a problem. You just use a 360 view. But again, that doesn't allow the measurement. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I could imagine with Cupix, no matter how you capture the data, you still can measure three dimensionally within the model. Yeah, that's uh, that's correct. With uh, Cupix, um, or, or two the two aspects. So the with the lighting, uh, the only effect that the lighting has is um, you know similar to all cameras, just just making sure the exposure is right. If you are going between like a really dark place or a really bright space, just make sure um, uh, just. In video mode, it doesn't adjust as well as like an in individual mode does. Um, okay. All right. So I, I've I've come out. I've uh, I've done my 360 photography. Let's say I did my video 25 stories, 500 square feet. So office building. Uh, okay. How do I get it into the Cupix Works platform? It's um you know it's similar to kind of the, the traditional uh, process people are familiar with uh, from Matterport is you just simply just upload the images, upload the scans uh, to our servers. Our cloud uh, process is on it. Uh, our turnaround time is at max 24 hours. Uh, so typically, you know, if people are scanning their construction project one day, they get it the following morning. Um, yeah, and then, and then from there you have it in your, in your viewer and, and you can sort by dates, uh, sort by levels and navigate your entire project. Okay, so it, 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 I'm hearing 24 hours, but I think I heard something else too. If it's, if it's by the end of the day, uh, maybe I'm done on my job site at 6 or 8 p.m., is there a reasonable expectation that I might wake up in the morning, at, uh, be in the office 8 or 9, be on the site 8 or 9, and it's ready? So is the commitment level 24 hours, but typically it's still ready overnight for most of us in the United States. Correct. Yeah. So, so max, uh, max time that we kind of guarantee you and promise is that 24 hours. Uh, average times are, are much faster than that. Okay. Um, so, so so, I, yeah. I, 
I, I, what I would just suggest for our audience who might be thinking, oh, I'm looking at Matterport, but I heard of Cupix, uh, Cupix works, I'm, and I'm trying to understand the difference. Uh, I, again, I would say ask uh, the Matterport rep that if you have a, a model of 500 square feet, uh, I think the short answer is it's just not possible with Matterport, but let's say it was 100 that you took, you broke up the building into 25 models, you, you now have maybe 50,000 square feet or 100,000 square feet. Ask the question, how long does that take the process? Because uh, you might be surprised that uh, it doesn't come back in 24 hours and it might take two days or three days, but there's certainly no commitment level that I'm aware of at Matterport to, uh, to say, uh, we guarantee that we will process your model within 24 hours of that size. Mm -hmm. um, and and one aspect that we also uh, provide to our customers is uh, after all the al algorithms are done processing, um, we always have our customer success rep uh, look at each model, model to QA it and, and to make sure that you know, we're delivering a good result back to you. Um, and so, so we have, uh, you know, people, uh, our, our customer support team, you know, actively working with our customers to make sure that they are able to capture their projects. So th this is interesting because Matterport just processes the model automatically and sends it back. I think I'm hearing something slightly different here is our process is automated, but that said, if there is an issue, we actually have a, a QA a quality control person that's actually looking at it before it gets delivered in case there needs to be some cleanup or adjustments. Exactly. And, and there's, um, you know, because uh, you're dealing with people with a camera on their helmet, they're walking around a site. Uh, sometimes they just like walk too fast or, or whip around corners, things like that. Um, and so that's a situation where like, hey, like, you know, these like four frames where you ran around this corner, they kind of broke and they're like not oriented the correct way. Um, so we'll fix it for you and then we get the feedback. But next time, try not to do that again. Uh, and, and so that's the benefit is we're, we're able to um, work with our people to have success on every project. Awesome. Uh, okay, so Miles has been processed. Talk about hosting. Uh, uh, cloud hosted is, and is it, uh, can I host it on my own server uh, or uh, does it need to be cloud hosted? And if so, what's the security? And that's definitely one of the benefits of Cupix is we, um, we give you a lot more flexibility uh, in, in terms of data ownership, owning your data, in terms of uh, where it's hosted. Um, we're, we use AWS. If you are uh, have high security um, constraints. Um, you can use um, private AWS servers. Uh, there's like government uh, approved AWS servers. Um, so there are a lot of options for you to uh, own the data, download the data or control it at the end of a project or make sure it's on approved locations during a project. And is there offline hosting as well? There's not offline hosting, um, but there is an aspect for our enterprise level customers. Uh, many times uh, the site documentation needs to be preserved for many years after a project. You are allowed to download the data to keep it in a secure file for archival. Um, and then we, we do have an offline viewer to be able to access it. Um, but if you ever need to uh, spin up that project again, say for example, you know we have many people using us through like the pre-construction, during construction and then handover. Um, so that gets more to facility management and over the entire like life cycle of the building. If you're using it more from facility management perspective, um, then you need to, uh, you know, use the hosted version online. Okay. So let me see if I can break this down a little bit. Um, so uh, uh, a typical client understands AWS, um, Amazon Cloud, uh, uh, totally happy, know that it's reliable, secure, uh, and it, it's accessible. Um, but if I'm a super large client and I have my own Amazon Cloud and I want the data uh, hosted in my Amazon Cloud, that's okay with Cupix. Correct. Yeah. We, we can set that up for enterprise level customers. Okay. So uh, Matterport doesn't do that. So if you, if you are, uh, again, if you're, uh, you know, looking at Matterport, ask your rep, 
ask them every which way to Sunday to say, I have my own Amazon cloud. I want it hosted in my cloud. And, uh, uh, and if you get an answer, yes, please get back to us. <laughs> and then we get around that work form because as far as we know, that's never ever happened. Uh, second, uh, in terms of ownership and use of the data. So uh, does, does uh, Cupix uh, take any ownership in the data? Does it use the data for any other purpose? So that is uh, another aspect because this industry, um, uh, yeah, pe people want to control their data. People want to control their projects. There is a huge liability, these huge projects online. Uh, so, so we have it that, you know, uh, customers do control their data and completely own their data. When they uh, shut down a project or remove it, uh, we don't have access to it anymore. Um, so it would require them to save like an offline copy. And do you, does Cupix create derivative works from the data? There are, there is an option uh, that some customers can opt into uh, is to allow us to use their data for R&D purposes. Uh, much of that is our research related to uh, the algorithms, which is doing the processing. Um, but that's an opt-in if customers want. Yeah, you can opt-in. So if, uh, again, if you're in the AEC space and you're comparing Matterport and Cupix, one of the questions you want to ask your Matterport rep is, um, I understand that the um, user agreement allows Matterport to create derivative works from the models that we upload to the platform and probe on that. And if they say that that's not the case, get that in writing because uh, Matterport does create derivative works from Matterport tours and uses that in other ways and sells it in other ways and is likely to use it in APIs. Uh, uh, so uh, something to ask. Uh, uh, it's likely that you'll get the answer that you own the copyright in your work um, but the fact is you, the copyright, uh, your work can only be displayed within Matterport. There's no offline hosting. <clears throat> so uh, something to probe is uh, owner, uh, ownership of uh, data. Let's talk a bit a little about password c c control and access. I, I think I want to ask this a little bit differently. Is an open-ended question. Tell me about Cupix Works collaboration. Yeah, you know, we understand on an active project, you have uh, many different levels of people uh, operating at many different locations or uh, areas within the project. Uh, so we actually have a, a very detailed hierarchy of uh, permissions uh, in terms of uh, groups of types of people that are allowed to view it, uh, how much access they have, whether it's view only, whether it's view and comment, uh, or whether it's uh, edit the project as well. Um, for example, you know, we have owners you want to have access to the entire project. Uh, but if you're a, a general contractor and uh, perhaps you're using this tool for your uh, coordination meetings, uh, you can give out um, access to Cupix to all of your individual subcontractors, um, but perhaps limit that by a specific level. It's only a single floor of a building. Uh, you could even uh, limit access by specific dates. It's only give them a date window in which they're allowed to view. Um, so, so there's many different options for controlling, uh, the levels of how much detail they can see, what they're allowed to do with that information, and then who can use it. So we have a very robust system specifically designed for the AEC industry. So I, I, I would suggest anyone that's, uh, uh, interested in, uh, is thinking about Matterport and Cupix works, uh, ask your rep about your Matterport rep about collaboration because collaboration is uh, is, is super limited in terms of I'm the admin of it, or I've given someone access to annotate. Uh, and, and unless something's changed recently, that's about it. So uh, all the different granular uh, descriptions, Gannon, that you've described for Cupix works is just not even an option uh, with Matterport. Uh, uh, collaboration, uh, access, permit permissions. Uh, I think you have some collaboration features in terms of real time and annotation and uh, maybe, could you talk a little bit about that for Cupix Works? Yeah, you know, the annotation feature, we showed a little bit of that earlier. Um, 
the, the big aspect that, that we enable is um, in many ways, just standard issue tracking, uh, standard logging of, of um, you know, questions, tasks, RFIs. Um, but what really makes it uh, unique is that, that spatial component, um, being able to navigate it uh, within a 2D model, within a 3D model, knowing exactly where these issues are, don't jump in and look around. Um, and, and the one other benefit is we do have a lot of uh, deep uh, like BIM integrations. Uh, so depending on which, you know, we have active integrations directly with BIM 360, Plan Grid and Procore. Uh, but if you're working with say um, some uh, facility management software or some other system, uh, we can actually export all this data in a, a, like a, what's called a BCF format, which is like a new uh, BIM specific industry format um, for maintaining all the metadata uh, of the information as well as like the spatial location. So you can move it in and out of our system. Uh, uh, B BCF, BIM BCF. collaboration format. Correct. So, uh, so it sounds like uh, if you're trying to make a decision between Matterport and Cupix Works, one of the things to ask uh, your, your internal team is which platforms are important to us. So, if if Plan Grid and Procore and BIM 360 and perhaps yet other BIM related. Uh, solutions that can integrate with BCF is to ask Matterport what integrations they have. Because I, you know, when I, when I look at Cupix works, uh, one of the things that strikes me is it's, it's a, it's a work, it's a living, it's a living three-dimensional model that allows for annotation by any trade uh, to document um, uh, uh, problems, challenges, and to easily pinpoint it within a three-dimensional model as opposed to, oh, I've taken a photo and I've emailed it off to someone. It's, it's, do you want to talk any more about uh, uh, how that annotation fits into reducing site visits or reducing uh, reduce uh, uh, rework or tracking progress or uh, preventing disputes? Yeah, I mean, and the, the biggest thing is really just providing all the information in one place. So having like a single hub uh, that can act as, like you said, your living, breathing, uh, like as built documentation. Uh, another popular term term is the digital twin. Uh, so really documenting, you have the history of all these issues uh, within the space. Uh, you have the, the timeline of uh, issues over time, of the photos over time. Um, a couple other things, you know, that I'll mention is we also have like when you bring up up the concepts of uh, BIM, is uh, we essentially understand a site at like three different levels. Uh, we understand it at the level, like what floor are you on uh, at time, like what point in time are you looking at, um, and you can also look at uh, the concept of rooms, which is like an area or a grouping of um, information. Um, so like on, on a large project, you can have a, a table of, if you have a BIM model and you import your like Revit model, uh, it can automatically extract the names and an area of different rooms. Um, so this is another way for you to like manage or quickly navigate to specific areas. So like, hey, I wanna go to this classroom and see what was happening uh, here in like September, uh, September 13th. And forgive me, the, the print is so small, e even I have trouble with it. Could you just in a big picture describe the columns and the rows? Yeah, here on the left is um, uh, the list of rooms. Um, so, so you know, th this is the same concept of in, in your BIM model um, or floor plan, you have the different, uh, yeah, just different room names. I think if I make this map bigger, um, we can see that in a second. And then to the right is, uh, this is the time lapse aspect. So over time, a capture on June 4th, uh, capture on June, July 19th, September 13th. Um, so you can go to a specific date and time and a specific level. Um, and how hard is it to find that annotation in a specific room on a specific date? It, it, like if you know uh, the name of a, a space, uh, you can just type it in and query um, and it'll, it'll just find it right here. So we even have a search bar. 
Um, so, so if you know you're looking for like specifically mechanical room 105 or anything, you can just type in like MEP 105 and you can find that query it, see what dates you have capture. In this case, we have all dates have capture. Um, it's possible you might have like a capture a couple of the times, but not every time. Yes. So when you called up that specific room, it called up the 3D tour and BIM models for that room. And now I imagine with those either those tabs at the bottom, the labels at the bottom of each 3D tour, that you can change the date or mm -hmm. in your information panel at the right, select one of those markers by date to take you there. So it looks like you have two ways to get there. Yeah, you, you have many ways to get there. You can search by the name in the search bar, go to a specific room. You can uh, pick a date in the table view, pick a date in the main view. Um, so they're really, depending on just like, even how you like think, like you're, you're in a project and you're just thinking like, I wanna get to this area. Uh, we make it easy to navigate to that section. And can, can you just you know, take us through the annotation and, and either point out if that's pl a plan grid or if that's a, <clears throat> is that part of the Cupix native platform for uh, annotation? Yeah, so within the native application for annotations, we have uh, the ability to even uh, create like templates or, or groups. So a, um, depending on like the type of projects you're on, uh, you can even have preset forms. Uh, so if, if you need to go through a facility to do an inspection, you have a preset form of questions. Um, so you can even set that up within your template. So you can go through a, an area, <clears throat> select one of those questions, fill it out and, and do that quickly. Um, and really in terms of how it syncs, whether you're using Procore or Plan Grid, it kind of all syncs uh, the same way as you, uh, you know, add the annotation, um, it, it tracks the location, and uh, it says that you're able to take those notes. And, and so those notes, I think at the highest level is about reducing site visits, mm -hmm. inspect, measure, annotate. I think we'll, 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 we'll take a look at that in a second. Reducing rework, tracking progress, preventing disputes at the highest level. That's what this level of detail is about. Yeah, it's however you're really managing your project. It gives you that that option to do it that way. Okay, let's just be, before we take it off screen share, I just want to pause a moment. So again, if you're in the AEC space and you're trying to make a decision, you've heard about Matterport, kind of the gorilla in the space, most investment perhaps, but uh, nevertheless, you've discovered Cupix Works and you're trying to compare Cupix Works 2.0 versus Matterport. Uh, what, uh, what Gannon is showing us here is side-by-side, side, either side-by-side side weekly, monthly, daily construction progress, or side-by-side side with BIM. Uh, ask your Matterport rep if you can do that. Short answer, no, you can't. There's no side-by-side side comparison in Matterport uh, of anything like this. And if you find that little mini map in the left side helpful for navigation, uh, Matterport does not offer uh, that solution for navigation. Now that said, there's something called the highlight reel in Matterport. Does Cupix Works have uh, thumbnails within the tour to jump from place to place? Uh, there's concepts like that too and very popular like construction tools like Navisworks. Um, they're called like viewpoints. Uh, so we don't have viewpoints in that way where you can curate a list of views. Uh, though typically the way people do that is just when you share a model, you can share and create a new link. So whenever you create a new share link, it actually saves that view. So if you want to send a specific view to someone, you could do it that way or potentially through uh, an RFI, through a annotation. Okay. Um... And in, in the collaboration, is, is there anything like Skype or, or excuse me, Zoom? Is there anything like Zoom meets Cupix Works built in to the platform? No, no video conferencing aspect. Um, the main aspect is for asynchronous communication, you know, going back and forth between comments and annotations. Uh, you can see uh, who's actively in a model. So if you have multiple people in a model at a time, 
uh, you can see that, but for the most part, um, it's the purpose is to share and communicate about an issue. Okay, so uh, 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 the safety person uh, may annotate a model overnight asynchronously, asynchronously uh, give direction about things on the job site that need to be dealt with now. Yeah, no, that's definitely a, a viable use case. Um, uh, so, um, is there, is there... And you mentioned a couple of things earlier in terms of uh, uh, like unique captures or ways. Uh, and I think you just mentioned like, can you go above ceiling? Um, and, and this is really like a uh, just a perennial problem or challenge. It's very hard to document these complex spaces. Um, and, and you know, in, in like typically healthcare facilities, uh, you're only allowed to access things it has to be very secure and sealed <laughs> through something like this to uh, prevent dust and contaminants uh, from getting into these like sensitive labs. Um, and so in this, in this uh, capture, you can see this entire floor plan, we, we capture an entire like wing of a uh, facility, but in this one specific room, they uh, wanted to get to the above uh, ceiling. Um, so we actually have that as a, a layer. So we're able to capture the floor plan and then come up through here, um, and where's the hole at, at the bottom? Oh, there it is, it's there. Uh, so, so, you, so you can see, start, you're in this sealed um, you know, barrier, and with a, a long extension pole, essentially be able to um, stick the camera in different angles and see the space. So you can see there's not even much room around here. Um, and there's, there's a corner right here. Um, just to illustrate this a little bit more. Um, and, and this is what we say when we have it in 3D, is we actually have the exact orientation of each panorama uh, photo of this above ceiling space. Um, so each, each photo is tied into the exact location. So is there, is there a layer that I can say, show me anything above seven feet? Uh, typically like how, how this is oriented is, is just the level feature. So you can go to the below ceiling or the above ceiling ah, level. Okay, great, okay. Um, that, that's amazing in itself. Certainly Matterport does not offer that. Yeah, and, and documenting environments like this are, are you, you know, near I, possible. <laughs> yeah, I would say, you know, you could probably do this in a Matterport tour using a, a 360 camera and, and set it on a 360 view. But, you know, good, good, good luck uh, in, in terms of having it uh, show up in the right place and having to deal with uh, manually moving the location of that 360 to actually be in the right place. So, Correct. And, and that's what the, uh, it's like the mode that enables this type of capture is that cluster where you can take a series of individual shots. Um, and, and then it's a unique algorithm we do that where we can fit them all together in the correct uh, position. Okay. You know, I, I, I you know, I, I did ask you about the highlight reel and I, and you answered about how you could just share a specific link, but I, I I, I think that what I think of as a mini map, the, the 2D schematic floor plan in the left, I would imagine everyone in AEC in the construction space is just used to reading floor plans. And that's probably the most natural way uh, in the AEC space to navigate the space and quickly go to a specific, and, and, and I, I'm guessing on this, this little mini map in the bottom left gives me a choice of floors is that I could say, I want to be on floor two, floor three, floor so, or ma maybe that's when I'm changing the floor for the tour. The mini map is automatically changing as well. Correct. So whenever you switch, you, so you can see we're at the entire hospital floor now. Once I switch down to the bottom floor, uh, versus when I switch to the above ceiling, uh, you just see that reflective ceiling plan. Uh, yeah. so, so we actually can, you know, projects have like dozens and dozens of floor plans. So you can upload multiple floor plans, multiple construction documents, multiple uh, 3D models to the site and, and, and cycle between them as needed. And, and, and does the, the 360 panorama, e each one of those dots representing the 360 panorama, does it sh show up on this floor plan automatically? Or does somebody actually have to put the 360s in the right space, place? 
Yeah, and so it's the semantic of the algorithm is we have it set. Uh, it requires a floor plan to start with. So you start with a floor plan, but once you have that, um, uh, so where's that able floor to... plan come from? That that comes from the client uh, who has a floor plan and just simply uploads it. And and then is this the algorithm or is this the quality control person or a little bit of both? Uh, the very first time you start a project, uh, so like the very first time, you have to um, set up the floor plan. And uh, when you import it, there's like a couple steps in like a wizard just to import it. Uh, but once you have that set up, uh, then the algorithm automatically locates it within the floor plan. So just and while you're capturing, you say, I'm on floor one, I'm on floor two. Um, and then it, it's able to uh, fit its location within that map. So, so how does the camera or the Cupix iOS app know where it is in the floor plan? Are you telling it when you capture to say, hey, this is where I am on the floor plan? There's a couple of a quick cues, uh, a manual input that we re request. Uh, for example, if, if you're doing a video walk through a floor plan, uh, you say, this is where I started, um, just to give it a, an initial constraint. Um, but then after that, it's completely automatic. That's awesome. You know, Gannon, what I, what I love about you showing this piece to me right now is, is like, well, of course, this is how it works. But uh, it, Anyone who's trying to make a decision about Matterport and Cubics works should take those shots from this show and say, hey, Matterport sales rep, I'd like to see your mini map of the 2D schematic floor plan showing where I am within the space. And the short answer is Matterport does not offer that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, you know, one aspects of, uh, from the beginning, we built this from the ground up for uh, AC users to be used in construction and the design process. Um, and ours is less of a uh, highly polished uh, marketing tool. Uh, instead, it's, it's a very like robust and functional uh, tool that integrates with like a lot of BIM software, construction uh, let me, software. Let me go back for, for a moment to the, uh, the, the hosting, uh, we talked about that there's an offline storage version and there is a viewer. So it sounds like with Cupix works, if you needed to have the model offline, do you, do you still get the full viewing robust experience? Our, um, so, so the model offline is, is primarily a, um, uh, kind of archival and, and compliance um, uh, capability. So, so, so it's, it's not as much for active projects. I, I do, it has limited functionality. Uh, so the offline viewer uh, is able to save uh, the floor plans and all the imagery. Um, so you can still navigate, move around, but none of the other functionality works. So it's primarily just reviewing um, once a project is complete. Um, but, but that's more of a, a niche uh, use case. It's fine. And then would I still use that offline archive to upload again to Cupix if I needed to restore that model for use? If you, yeah, if you ever wanted to re restore it uh, and turn it into an active project again, uh, you can even activate a new license of Cupix and, uh, and yes, upload it. Okay. And then talk to me a bit, little bit about backup. So it's in the Amazon cloud. Is it, is it, if I needed, if I needed to add to a model, I can add to a model. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's all the redundancies and backups and, and you know capabilities that you'd expect from like a, a cloud software. Um, so, so there's multiple like safety layers. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So, it's, so someone who's particularly interested in in backups and security and privacy. Uh, um, obviously, ask Cupix works more on that topic. I think that the questions to ask uh, with Matterport is to is to say, please explain the backup process with Matterport because I, I would tell you that there really is no practical backup process. They'll explain how you can uh, 
save files on your iPad through a very convoluted process, but it one would think that you would just upload it to the Matterport cloud. And uh, if you ever needed uh, to download it, you, you could. And the short answer is no, Matterport doesn't offer that. And there is no practical Matterport backup or offline with the exception as Matterport enables the downloading of a model to an iPad, but once it's down on the iPad, you don't have any way to actually share it or do anything with it. And I, I think the other piece to probe on uh, Matterport would be um, uh, offline archive, because there, there isn't, uh, you can, and, and there isn't any practical way to, to store stuff and there isn't any practical way unless you literally save your iPads and every time you shoot a project, once you fill up an iPad is to go buy another iPad. Or yeah. uh, I could explain, if, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll just simply send, send people to the We Get Around Network forum, wganforum.com and uh, use the search box for warning Will Robinson or backup or restore. And that'll take you to a lot of discussions on this crazy topic of <clears throat> excuse me, of, of, of Matterport backup and, and restore, really just horrible. Um, and, and they know it. Uh, it's something that, that we get around network forum community has documented probably for seven and a half years of yeah. what, what's the backup and restore process. So happy to hear with Cupix, at, at least you can archive it and have it. Uh, and then you have all these uh, methods for uh, backup in the cloud. Um, uh, in, in terms of um, uh, you, you, on your on the on your website cupix.com c u p i x dot com, there's a discussion about cameras and kits. Can you tell me a little bit about Cupix Works kits? Yeah, essentially, we allow. Um... You know, like I mentioned before, a variety of capture methods, um, and it's all just to provide ultimate flexibility. Do to... I do I buy my own Ricoh Theta Z1, or do you like load me up with the gear that that I need based on the project that I um, I'm about to begin doing? If you have a camera and a, and a selfie stick, uh, essentially you, you could use that, um, um, and that is fine. Most of our customers don't want to have to think about that or go find things on the market. So we, we provide uh, pre-bundled pre packages, uh, depending on where their needs. Uh, so we have a, a variety of cameras available, uh, bundled, along with things like external battery, external lighting, or unique uh, like load light environments. Different options are, we, there's a helmet mount if you're wanting to do the, the walkthrough quickly. Uh, sometimes there's an extended pole that can go up to 15 feet. If you're trying to get high up, maybe above ceiling, maybe above tall equipment. Um, what else? Yeah, th those are the main options. So, so essentially like, you know, short selfie stick, long pole, helmet, drone mount. Uh, those are some of the options that we give people. Okay. So I, I think what I'm hearing is a little bit different than Matterport. Matterport will, will tell you what cameras are compatible. Go, go buy it. Um, and, um, if you're in the AEC space and you're looking at Cupix works and you define what the project is, Cupix will put together the kit for you of the gear that's necessary to shoot it. So you don't have to think about, well, what is it that I need? It all comes in a kit. Yeah. And we have some guides that to be able to let you know which kit items you need. Um, and really we're built around, um, you know, flexibility, whether you want to put on a drone, whether you want to walk around with a video, do individual shots. So we have people like documenting like shipping containers or submarines to just like standard uh, construction sites, office spaces. So, you know, running the gamut really. Ah, which kind of, uh, it, it diverts me a little bit, but it's such an interesting question. So on, on a submarine, I, I could imagine there's a lot of security issues uh, when they, imagery gets uploaded to Cupix, do you have any access to see what's being processed? Do your customers support people? Uh, can they see the tour? You mentioned that there are 
quality assurance people that are, sound like they're looking at the tour to do something, but I imagine that some clients don't want anybody looking at anything, period, end of story. Could you talk yeah. about that? Yeah, so, so the default uh, for users is uh, to let our customer success uh, manager uh, view e each model and, and to help provide feedback and guidance and be that a second set of eyes as a QA, so you don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Uh, but we have do have the option to opt out of that and make it so it is a secure uh, pipeline so we, we can't see it. So we can opt out of that QA process. So it's only the algorithms processing it and then you get the information directly. So it's possible to say, I don't want anybody to see this. And does that meet some level of security by people who think about that kind of stuff? Yeah, so that typically kind of falls within this, this enterprise level customer that needs intense security or privacy uh, requirements. Uh, and so this typically bundled with um, things like their own private cloud servers that they're using for data storage, uh, controlling who has access to it. Um, so, so we essentially built this platform to be very enterprise friendly. Um, so whatever your requirements are, uh, we have an option for you. Okay. Uh, uh, LiDAR support? Yeah, so, so primarily Cupix is a, um, in terms of the, the type of uh, processing that we do, is we use the 360 cameras to document a space. And like we mentioned, however you hold it, whether it's the helmet on a drone walking around, that's fine. Uh, but beyond that, our viewer is a very robust uh, a viewer to be able to hold all your project data. Um, so we can have your floor plans, your BIM models, your uh, 360 imagery data, and also uh, LiDAR data. So whether you're using terrestrial scanning uh, or have like mobile mapping LiDAR, uh, you can upload that onto our servers to be able to host it all together. So similar to how you have um, uh, comparing it to the, the BIM model, you can also view uh, point cloud data, take measurements from it um, if you want to house all this data in one location. Okay, awesome. Uh, how about uh, in terms of exporting data? I think about, you know, I, I'm uh, at the top of the show, I mentioned 25 story, 500,000 square foot office building going through renovation. That's really at the beginning. Uh, there, there are no construction documents that exist for this old building. Uh, we really do need an as built. Okay, we go create this three dimensional Cupix model. Uh, are there features for, for exporting uh, in order to bring it into a BIM model to, to begin, uh, uh, whether it's uh, Revit or SketchUp or other CAD programs to, to begin the uh, uh, begin with the as built? Yeah, at this time, we do not um, uh, provide any deliverables like that, uh, like a, a 3D point cloud or a 3D mesh from our model. So, so there are no um, outputs you can download directly from our captures. So we, 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 we primarily use, um, it's more like a sparse map. So we, we, we know the pose and location of each image within it. And so we, we build a map that way and it's scaled and dimensioned correctly. Um, and that's what enables some measurements as well. Um, but it, it's basically all behind the scenes. It's nothing that you can uh, download or, or view directly. So can I, a, a, a bigger level question, can I use Cubix for creating an as-built? Not for uh, creating a floor plan. So if you need to create a floor plan, um, you know, there's a variety of methods uh, that you can use. Okay, um, but there's no exporting a three-dimensional CAD file uh, today with Cupix. No, uh, you typically, um, re recommended best practice is that you already have a floor plan that you can use, even if it's outdated, something that's similar. Uh, that is ideal. Uh, occasionally, uh, you can come in with no uh, floor plan and still create a capture, uh, but the outputs that we create uh, do not allow you to create a floor plan from it. Okay, so score one for Matterport. We've been visiting for an hour and 15 minutes. This is actually the, I think the first time that we've hit something that, that Matterport has has something, I think today better than Cupix, which, which is you can export a matter, you can uh, order a Matterport matter pack, uh, the point cloud files uh, and a variety of other files that can then be converted to CAD 
programs. Uh, this is actually the, the, the first time I think we've actually hit on something that Matterport uh, is actually better for it. Though, if we're talking about a, a 500,000 square foot space trying to create a, an as-built uh, with Matterport, uh, good luck. You probably have to break it into uh, 50 to 100,000 square foot spaces and shoot multiple models. And uh, I, 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 maybe you can do the math faster than I can. If it takes two hours to shoot, if it takes an hour to shoot 2,000 square feet and it's 500,000 square feet, it is how many hours? I, <laughs> I uh, wasn't, I didn't catch the numbers you threw out. Hey Siri, 500,000 divided by 2,000. 500,000 divided. It's 250 hours. So it would take 250 hours. I, I should ask Siri how many days that is. It, <laughs> it's just, it's too massive a project to <clears throat> even think about. Okay. Um, uh, again, and we, we've covered a lot of ground. Um, I, um, before we sign off, is, is there anything that we didn't cover today uh, about building smart with Cupix. Um, yeah, yeah. There's one more kind of visually interesting thing I could show uh, related to that drone capture. Like we mentioned, we keep talking about flexibility, flexibility, flex flexibility of how you capture, types of spaces you capture. Um, so our algorithm is able to work um, in a variety of environments, even you know in the air, mounted on a drone, flying around. So this was a, uh, a 250,000 square foot uh, facility that did a, a nine minute drone flight on. Um, and you know, we have the same, some of the same capabilities that related to having, a, uh, having it synced with your BIM. So you're, if you're trying to you know, understand what is uh, um, documented on, on the roof lines, if equipment's installed in the correct location, you can look at that. Um, so it's just, it's just one one more option that we kind of give you uh, to really handle the whole spectrum of you know needs your project might have. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up, and, and I think earlier you did mention too like where warehouses and what type of uh, patterns you walked in a warehouse. So you know here you can see this is the um, floor plan, so you can just see the little lawnmower pattern of just zigzag walking around uh, the space. And you can see how it's gonna be built out in the future. So here it's actually in, in the wall. <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting space here because uh, if you had to do that space with Matterport, uh, again, if you're in the AEC space, you're trying to make a decision between Matterport and Cupix Works, uh, ask your rep specifically, your Matterport rep specifically, how that empty warehouse space gets shot and asking them for some type of guarantee regarding success. Because I, I, I bought my Matterport camera in July of 2014 and I can tell you, and, and I'm the you know, uh, founder of a community of uh, a ton of Matterport service providers. I think our knowledge base I'm looking at is 84,000 posts among 13, 14,000 topics. And a lot of the discussion is about large spaces. A lot of the discussion is about large open spaces. And this is exactly the kind of space that is super challenging for Matterport to capture because Matterport's uh, 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 infrared is is looking is is trying to map the space and the, the whole space looks the same. There's there's just there's just uh, if you're far away from those posts, then you you have a, a shiny floor and the ceiling's too far to 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 read the uh, uh, to for Matterport camera to know where it is. This is a a really super difficult space to do with a, a Matterport Pro 2 camera. Yes, you could use a Ricoh Theta Z1 and there'll be a crazy workflow around how to use that. Uh, but the short answer is if you have spaces, open spaces like this, super hard, probably almost impossible really to do with Matterport. Uh, I guess you could do it using some April tags, uh, things that look like QR codes, but again, su super, super hard. 
uh, and it's super large, which then creates this challenge for processing. Uh, I, I'm sorry, again, and you were showing us that space, but I just had to add that commentary to it. Yeah, and you know, so, so that's that's the the benefit of a, a a tripod sensor with with a with a depth sensor is that you in, in the right environment you have uh, better quality like measurement capabilities, um, but it's also relying on that depth sensor. So in a lot of environments, it can fail. Uh, whereas Cupix is a lot more flexible in a variety of environment types, whether you're flying in the air in a large space, and, and of course you know areas that are um, these warehouses, we've actually been doing them a lot, so they work really well. Uh, probably one of the, like, the challenging environments is always like low light. If lighting is bad, just the sensor doesn't work very well just because it's the camera. Um, also, uh, lots of like, repeating patterns is a, a chronic kind of challenge in like, computer vision applications. Um, but, but we have ways to uh, address that. Uh, before we sign off, uh, is there anything else about Cupix Works 2.0 versus Matterport for construction professionals you feel we didn't cover today? Um, you, you know, uh, just another aspect is is the pricing component. Um, kind of, you know, the, the tune we've been hitting all, all day is uh, flexibility, customization, depending on your project needs. Uh, the same goes with our pricing model. Um, it's not like a one size fits all. Uh, so depending on the size of your project, the number of captures you're going to be doing, um, uh, pricing can scale to that level. Um, so, so it really makes it uh, flexible for users depending on uh, the type of projects they're working on. Awesome. Uh, Gannon, thanks for uh, uh, being a guest on the show today. Yeah, I really appreciate talking. Uh, we've been visiting with Gannon Wildler. Uh, Gannon is product manager at Cupix. He's based in Denver, though Cupix is actually headquartered in San Jose, California. Uh, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGA 